Understanding how having retinoblastoma RB as a child affects how you think and how you feel as you grow up. Retino means from the retina in the eye. Blast looks similar to cells in early development and oma refers to a group of cells or a tumour. Essentially, RB is a rare eye cancer. It is diagnosed in approximately 50 children a year or one child a week in the UK. Most commonly, it is diagnosed in babies and young children, and there are two forms of the condition. One is heritable, genetic, and the other is not. It affects some people in one eye, which is called unilateral, and some in both, which is called bilateral. There is a very high survival rate in the West of about 98%, but children often undergo a range of intensive cancer treatments and sometimes enucleation, a surgical removal of the eye or both eyes. We know that the impact of any cancer and or treatment can have both long and short term effects on psychological and social well-being, some of which can last throughout a lifetime. For this group, it can also mean reduced vision, facial changes and identity related distress. 32 teenage and young adult survivors of RB shared their experiences with Nicola O'Donnell to contribute to research which aims to improve the well-being of young people impacted by this cancer. In this video, you'll meet Sam, Amina, Tom and many other young people. These are not their real names, but their experiences are spoken in their own words. Here are some of their stories. Many young people spoke about how they were worried about how RB had affected their parents as they were likely to have full memories of the time of the diagnosis and treatment. This was particularly the case for those who were diagnosed when they were very little. It was the emotional strain that was on my parents, having to look after this newborn child and having intravenous drips everywhere, a mum not being able to kind of have those first few weeks with a child as you'd like, basically. Some find it hard to be reminded of their illness with looking at photos bringing back memories of difficult times. Because obviously, I have baby pictures of me. I didn't have any hair. Weirdly, I don't like looking at those pictures. I don't know why. I feel like it doesn't remind me of something good. Even though I don't remember it, just subconsciously, it's just... yeah. As we know, about 40% of people diagnosed with RB has a genetic form. This sometimes means they have a family member who also had this type of cancer, but for others they are the first to carry this faulty gene. In these instances, difficult feelings can arise. I started this gene, so my mother and father didn't have it. My brother doesn't have it. I'm the lucky one who started with this gene. As RB is most commonly diagnosed in babies and young children, there is often an expectation that the individual won't remember their treatment. This research suggests otherwise. Some people had clear and sometimes distressing memories. Others could remember the kindness of staff who treated them. Sometimes memories were more subtle, only triggered by certain sensory experiences like sounds or smells. So my dad had shoe polish or something and it smelled exactly the same as anaesthetic gas or metallic sharpies, they smell the same. It can make you feel upset because you associate it with bad memories. Some people felt that the legacy of their experiences had made them who they are today. If I didn't have RB when I was young, I would have been a totally different person. I would have different goals and aspirations in life. Across all of the people who told us their stories, adolescence was named as the most difficult time in life. This is because you have to manage all of the normal challenges of being a teenager alongside the impact of being a childhood cancer survivor. I guess when you're that age, the only thing you want to be is normal. It's on your face, like you're looking into people's eyes the whole time when you talk to them, so it's like what you're greeted with. I guess being normal in that respect is the most important thing when you're that age. It's just a time where you don't feel, you don't even know who you are, you're just trying to figure out, you know, what kind of clothes am I supposed to wear, what's my style, what do I want to do, like, who am I? Ironically, it was also discussed that when you're a teenager and in need of the most support, it was more difficult to express how you feel and to ask for or accept help. Like, I do think I could have got help if I actually asked for it. I think my problem was that I probably just suffered a bit in silence. Sadly, 
bullying amongst people who had been treated with enucleation, surgical removal of the eye, was common. When you have had this treatment, you often wear a prosthetic eye, which one person described as a reason for mistreatment from others. Why was it me? Why can't I have two eyes still? Because then I wouldn't have had people coming up behind me and smacking me in the back of my head, expecting my prosthetic eye to fall out. I came home one day and I was like, what's a cyclops? And my parents said, it's a mythical creature with one eye. And I was like, oh, that's what this boy calls me at school. Although RB can make certain tasks more challenging, it doesn't usually mean that an individual can't take part in activities like their friends. Having said this, sometimes other people's lack of understanding or worries can get in the way. It's just the fact that when I was younger, other people were like, oh, she can't do this, she can't do that, she won't be able to do this. You're already putting things in the way before I've even started anything. Lots of people who shared their experiences described high levels of anxiety, particularly as teenagers. The perception of being ugly or that others perceive you to be so really impacted many people's confidence. I never asked anyone out really at secondary school because I didn't have any confidence and I felt like I was ugly and I always felt like women didn't like me. There were specific challenges for young people who have visual impairment. I feel like the fact that I'm blind has also contributed to me having a harder time socialising. Not many people talk to me. It doesn't help fitting in when your schoolwork is like size 40 font and you have a teacher standing next to you the whole time. I know it's necessary to have the teacher there, but it's also really annoying. Sometimes you feel like you're missing out on jokes and you can't sit next to people you want to. Decisions about having children was another common anxiety, particularly for young people with heritable RB, who have a 50% chance of any future children also having the cancer. You don't want to think, oh no, if I have kids, what if they have it as well and they have to go through it, and things like that. Yeah, that's definitely one I was like, thinking of, if, if you, if you were to want to have kids, would you pass it down to your child? Equally, worries about getting cancer again were high. I'm not really too sure about if it increases my risk of getting cancer in the future. I think it might do, I'm not really too sure. I'd internalise that there's tumours that could suddenly, you know, go off like a volcano. As well as the negatives, many individuals felt grateful for their treatments and the person that this had led them to become. I actually survived, you know, and I not only survived, but I can see. Many young adults have developed the ability to accept themselves and their identity, acknowledging their experience of RB without making it the only thing about them. The ability to validate your experience and reassure yourself was common, and for some, this was attributed to making concerted effort to make friends with RB and how it has shaped your identity and your life, rather than fighting it. I'm going to find my power in this thing. I'm going to make this my motivation, and I'm going to be friends with myself. I'm going to be friends with my illness. If you don't present it as a weakness, people won't take it as a weakness. Young people were asked what had helped them to cope with some of the lasting impacts of having had RB. These included having access to information once they got older, having someone independent to talk to, meeting others who have been through similar experiences, and support tools that can be accessed as and when needed. I felt like I'd lost control of my life and I felt that therapy was like, oh, okay, yeah, you can, you can start living again. Through this research, we are designing a new, tailor-made support tool to help survivors of RB. This will be created with people like those who shared their stories here, combining this with evidence from wider research to make sure that what is offered is safe, appropriate and helpful to as many people as possible. In the words of Sam, you just need someone to steer you in the right direction. We hope that you enjoyed this video and we look forward to sharing our new support tool in the near future. This was recorded by Tom Worthington James Fredenham Kieran Donovan you're D. Kelly Thredden. Katie Peller. Yuri Warburton. Sarah Turley. Nicola O'Donnell.